everyone, this is Ronnie Neo Owen, and this is the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. So I've already reviewed the Galaxy S21 and obviously the identity of this phone is very similar to that, but naturally there are some differences that make this one a little more ultra. Let's start with the design, which is definitely very similar to the Galaxy S21. Uh, the camera bump here is obviously much larger, and that's naturally because there's a lot more camera sensors here than, they are, than there are in the Galaxy S21. We'll get into those cameras in a little bit, but for now I'll say the camera bump definitely is huge, but it doesn't feel out of place. I, I really love this design that Samsung has gone with, where they the camera bump mounts into the edges of the phone. I just think that looks so slick. And it looks good even on this huge, uh, on this huge camera bump. I kind of prefer it on the, on the regular S21, but it's, it's pretty good here too. You can also probably tell that this is the Phantom Black model, which was a color that Samsung was really touting the, during their presentation, which I thought is kind of weird. They, they were saying stuff like, this is the boldest color they've ever made, and it's black, but it is a very nice black. It, there's almost no sheen to it, it doesn't reflect a lot of light. The camera bump doesn't either. It all just kind of looks very samey. And that can be, I guess, boring in, in a way, but it's it's really unique. I don't think any black phone looks this smooth and and has this really cool matte finish. Uh, that's also very smooth to the touch. So it's definitely very cool in the way that it looks. And I appreciate it a lot more now that I have it in my hands. But yeah, I don't know about being the boldest color. So now let's focus on those cameras. No pun intended. There are four traditional cameras here, even though there's a fifth sensor up here. This is a time of flight sensor for depth. But there are four traditional cameras. The main camera is 108 megapixels. Then there's an ultra wide camera that's 12 megapixels. And then there's two home telephoto cameras. And both of them are 10 megapixels. One is a 3x optical zoom lens, and the other is 10x. So it's a periscope lens, like we've seen in a few other phones, like the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, or the Oppo Find X2 Pro that I really like. Uh, I, like I said, I love that ability to go from multiple levels of zoom. Like when you start with a wide angle shot, and then you zoom in slowly to the regular lens, then to... 3x and then 10x zoom. I think that's really cool. And the fact that you have this uh, 3x lens zoom uh, in the middle now, you have that much more quality that you can get in the in-between shots. Because with something like the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, you would go from the main sensor to the to the periscope camera, and it kind of created a, a big. There was a big gap between the the zoom levels there, so. There was a, a bigger area, a bigger range, where the main camera would have to suffice before the telephoto camera kicked in. So now you have that step in the middle there that makes that a better looking zoom, or hopefully it does. I, I have to test it more, obviously. Even the selfie camera on this thing is pretty crazy. This is a 40 megapixel selfie camera, so that's definitely... <laughs> A big number for a selfie camera. It's similar to what the S20 Ultra did last year, but Samsung really likes pushing those numbers on very high with the, the S, S Ultra family. So that's not completely surprising. Of course, the cameras can record 4K video at 60 frames per second from all of the cameras on the back and I think on the front as well. So if you want a true 4K experience, this is a phone that can actually do that across all of their cameras. And the main camera also supports 12-bit HDR photos, so it promises a much wider color range, dynamic range, and more colors that it can display. So you should get some pretty good-looking pictures out of this. Samsung cameras can be a little finicky sometimes, but it's, it's an impressive figure, if nothing else. Another big difference between this and the Galaxy S21 and the S21 Plus is the display. Most notably because... Now, this year, every display in the lineup has a 120Hz refresh rate. That was also the case last year, I believe. But now Samsung cut back on the S20 and the S21 Plus, so they're only Full HD resolution, which I'm fine with. I really like that. 
But if you, if you want that quality experience, the S21 Ultra now is the only one that offers that. So this is Quad HD, 120 Hertz. And unlike last year's models, you can actually enable both of those things at the same time. So that is very cool. Of course, it's worth noting, it does still come in Full HD out of the box. Samsung does that with every phone they have that's Quad HD. And that's just because they feel like Quad HD doesn't have enough benefits to justify the heavy tech in battery life. And I have to be honest, I kind of agree with that. But if you really want that high resolution, it does help make some items on a little more visible. Another difference between this and the Galaxy S21 and S21 Plus in terms of the display is that those two phones can adjust the refresh rate automatically between 48 hertz and 120. This one can adjust it between 10 hertz and 120. And the fact that it can go lower is actually pretty important. The, the reason you want that is for something like if you're reading. Uh, as an article that's just text and you're not moving the screen, for example, or most importantly, probably for an always-on display. Say you're, if you have an always-on display and you have a, a clock on the always-on display, which is usually why you turn that on, with the 10, the 10 hertz refresh rate, the display is only to going, be, going to be updating the information on the screen 10 times per second. Uh, which is more than enough when you just really have a clock. You know, clocks only change at the most once per second. So you don't really need uh, that high refresh rate. You actually have phones now that have uh, as low as one hertz, like the OnePlus 9. So it's, it's exactly the same principle. The lower it can go, the more battery it can save when it's just not always on this point. Is so the fact that it can go down to the 10 hertz is probably going to make the battery on this last a lot longer than it would uh, on something like the S21. And that's also a benefit. I personally don't care about always on displays, but if you do, then this is definitely a cool addition. Of course, the big new feature that Samsung was really touting with the S21 Ultra and the, the thing that a lot of people were looking forward to was support for the S Pen, which is really cool. Except Samsung didn't send me an S Pen, so I can't try it. But yeah, you can buy it separately. And you can buy it by itself or with a case that also has a slot to store it. I would recommend that because there is no way to store the S Pen on this. So you might want to buy a ca the case and just have a place to put the S Pen when you're not using it. Otherwise, you have to come up with your own solution. And, and I think it's likely that you're going to end up losing it. I probably would. But yes, and I can try it, but if you want to, you can buy the S Pen for it, for it is now. And it will be pretty much like a Galaxy Note. So that's definitely a cool addition. Finally, the last big difference for the display is the size here. Uh, especially compared to the Galaxy S21 that I reviewed, this is 6.8 inches. The S21 Plus was 6.7 inches, so it's not a big difference there. But the S21, which is what I reviewed, that has a 6.1 or 6.2 inch display, so this is much bigger than that. And also, this has that curved screen that wraps around the edges just a little bit. It's more subtle than I think it's ever been on a Samsung phone, and I like that. The more subtle, the better. I actually tend to prefer flat displays, but I, I'd say this is fine. It's really, really subtle. I, barely, I could barely tell it was curved. And, but if you do like that curved style that makes the phone feel a lot rounder than this will do that for you which the s21 and the s21 plus don't do so that's another thing other improvements in terms of the specs compared to the s21 and s21 plus include the battery which is 5000 milliamp hours here that is especially big compared to the s21 which only has 4000 and it's still bigger than the s21 plus which has 4800 but it's it's slightly bigger i it, kind of balances out with the high resolution display, but then you have the lower refresh rate. So the, there are some things in favor of the, the battery life on this phone. Uh, you also get up to 512 gigabytes of RAM, of storage here, which you can't get on the other two models. And you can get up to 16 gigabytes of RAM here, which you also can't get on the other two. I believe the other two models only have eight gigabytes. So this is the base model, so it comes with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, but you can go up from there. And rounding out the specs, of course, we have the Exynos, or 
2100 or the Snapdragon 3.8 um, leading the charge. I don't live in Europe, so obviously I got the Exynos model. We got Exynos 2100. Now Exynos has a pretty bad reputation in general. Uh, I already reviewed the S21, so I kind of know how it behaves on this phone. And I will say, it's definitely a big improvement over the Exynos 990 from last year. Battery efficiency is way better. Performance is also a big improvement. It's still not on par with the Snapdragon 3.8, but this is definitely better than it was last year. And if you're in Europe, this is a pretty big upgrade, I would say. In terms of the software, of course, it's pretty much the same as the Galaxy S21. They all launched at the same time, so they all come with Android 11, with One UI 3.1 built on top of that. I'm not the biggest One UI fan, to be honest, but they do have some cool things. I like that you can swipe down from the notification shade and access this devices uh, section, which controls your smart home devices, like my smart lights. Or I also like that they now updated this to come with the Google Messages app pre-installed and set that as the default instead of using the Google app, the Samsung app that they used to use for this. It, it's, a, it's a minor step, but I, I much prefer Google Messages because I use that on you know every other phone, uh, Android phone that I review, so I, I'm pretty happy with that change. Now, of course, you can't talk about the Galaxy S21 family without talking about the box. So yes, this is much, much thinner than it was last year. And I actually appreciate that a lot. I think it's a, a valid point to say that you can now carry carry more phones like this, more boxes in a transportation truck or an airplane or whatever it might be than you could before. So if you want to send a bunch of units to, to a store, you don't need as many trucks now. Of course, the reason it's a smaller box, it's because there's no charging brick inside this case now. So you don't, you just don't get a charging brick. You do get a cable, so if you need a new cable, there's one in here, but there's no charging brick. Uh, people are not happy about that. <laughs> um, I, I've said before, like I said, it, it, I think the environmental advantages are realistically a thing. I, I think there are probably advantages in terms of the environmental impact of transport, transporting these boxes. Uh, but I've heard a lot of people say that uh, they just have to buy a charger separately now and that having that charger in its own box just makes things actually harder to transport and results in more pollution. I feel like that argument, well, obviously it still needs to be proven. I, I wonder if companies like Samsung or Apple will share figures on how many people are buying chargers in addition to their phones. Um, so we have an idea of exactly how common it is for people to buy a new charger uh, or just keep their old one. But I feel like that the number of people who probably don't buy a charger is high. And I, I would guess that there's probably a, a positive impact in that regard. But I don't know for sure. Like I said, hopefully we'll have a company or some agency or something sharing figures in that regard. And finally, there is the price of this phone. The Galaxy S21 Ultra starts at $1199, which is $200 lower than the S20 Ultra started last year. That right there, that's a huge, huge step down that I think was very necessary. The Galaxy S20 lineup was super expensive. They lowered the base price across the board by $200. And I think that makes every one of the phones here way more appealing than they were last year. And also this has already been discounted pretty heavily. I, I've seen it at $9.99. So it's definitely a better deal right now than, it, than the S20 Ultra was last year. So that is a good thing, I would say. And those are pretty much our first impressions of the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Obviously I'm gonna be reviewing the phone over the next couple of weeks. And the phone review will be on neowin.net. I hope you'll read it there. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.